Okay, now in this lesson we're going to be dealing with some polar calculus. So we're going to be taking derivatives of polar equations and we are going to be doing areas of polar curves. Okay, so our derivatives of polar functions. dy dx is dy d theta all over dx d theta. Well, remember, x is equal to r cosine of theta, and y is equal to r sine of theta. And you're going to need these conversions. So finding the slope of that curve when theta equals pi over 6, use this to write the equation of the tangent line. Okay, so equation of a tangent line y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So first you have to plug in and get x and y. x equals r cosine of theta. So x is equal to r, which is 2 sine 3 theta, times by cosine of theta. Now I plug in, I knew that was going to happen. So I plug in pi over 6. When I plug in pi over 6, I get the value of root 3. So now, I know what my x value is. My x value is root 3. Now to get the y, r sine of theta. 2 sine of 3 theta times by the sine of theta. Again, plugging in pi over 6, I get this value to be 1. So I now have my x and my y coordinates. All I need to get is my slope. So I find, and I'm going to do this in a different color, dy d theta. So the derivative of this, which is, um, so you, what you have here is you have a chain rule, but you also have a product rule. So that is 6 cosine 3 theta times the sine of theta, oh, I'm going to run out of room, plus 2 sine of 3 theta times by cosine of theta. And I find also dx d theta. And again, you have a product rule with a chain rule. So 6 cosine 3 theta cosine theta minus 2 sine 3 theta cosine of theta. Now when I plug in, so really it's that over that, that over that. So when I plug in pi over 3, I get, I'm sorry, pi over 6, I get negative root 3. And I'm not going through that step. I'm assuming that you guys can get that. So now it's a matter of y minus 1 is equal to negative root 3, x minus root 3. So that's our equation of our tangent line. Okay. Areas of polar functions. So we need to find the area inside this curve. So let's graph that curve real quick. Um, it is oriented up and down. Um, when I plug in 0, I get 2. When I plug in pi over 2, I get 4. 
I get 2 and I plug in pi, and I get 0. So I'm looking at that graph. Now remember, well, when we're finding area now, is we're going to be looking at how an area of one of these slices, let me draw a better one, an area of one of those slices. So the area of a sector, that's a sector, is one-half r squared theta. So the area of one of our wedges is one-half r squared d theta. Because the d theta is going to change, we're going to make that infinitely small, and we're going to sum up all those. So we're going to sum up all the area from 0 to 2 pi of my function, which is 2 plus 2 sine theta squared d theta. And when I do that, I get 18.8. Four nine five 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 nine two. Um, I just gave a bunch of decimals. Remember, I want everything rounded to three. So now, in general, the area inside a polar curve is given by one half alpha one to alpha two. So two different angles that are kind of bounding your area. In this case, we wanted this whole area. So that's why I went 0 to 2 pi. r squared d theta. OK, let's graph this guy. r, um, r equals 3 plus 2 cosine theta. So since it's a cosine, it's left and right. Zero is going to get me five. That's like kind of my starting point. At pi over two, I am at three. At pi over two, I am at one. And at, I'm sorry, at pi. At three pi over two, I am at three again. So our graph looks something like this. Rotates from here. And looks like that. So I need to find this total area. One half. Zero to two pi of the function. squared d theta. I am going to set that equal. I'm going to find that. And again, um, I didn't make this clear. I'm finding this in my calculator. 34.558. Now, something else that you can do is if you look, this graph is symmetric. So I could do twice my formula, 1 half. 0 to pi of that. So I bet you, if you plug this in your calculator, well, I did it in class today, plug this in your calculator, you're going to get the same thing that we get up here. OK, area between two polar curves now. So look at this kind of like a sector. I'm going to have one polar curve, another polar curve, and I need to find the area between them. So 1 half alpha to beta of the big polar curve. I'm going to call it r sub 0 squared, since that's what my picture is, minus r sub 1 squared. d theta. Okay, so it's bigger radius, outer radius minus inner radius. Uh, 
Okay, find the area of the region inside the circle, but outside the cardioid. So let me graph this. Inside my circle, r equals 1. I'm going to go by 1 halves just because... My radius is 1 here. Okay, so I'm going by halves since that's pretty a fairly small radius. Now my cardioid, um, when I plug in 0, I get 0. When I plug in pi over 2, I get 1. When I plug in pi, I get 2. Remember, I'm going by halves. And then a pi, 3 pi over 2, I get 1 again. So our graph looks something like this. And confirm that on your calculator. Your calculator is going to be a good visual for you. So I'm looking for this area in here. So I need to find those thetas where they intersect. Oh, well, okay. I need to find the thetas where they intersect. You could set the two equations equal. And that's when the cosine of theta equals zero. Um, we could see it because of how we graphed it. So I have one half the integral of the outer function squared minus the inner function squared d theta. Now your <laughs> integral limits, they are from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Because looking at this, this, yes, I understand that that was pi over 2. But this here is you need basically a continuous graph. You need a continuous piece of the graph that's all going to be one within one angle. So how I looked at it is I need to go from here to there one continuous way. 3 pi over 2 is not continuous because if I was going from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, I'd be going this way. And that wouldn't get me the right piece of the graph. What you could also do, and well, let me get you an answer to this. This ends up being, where's my answer? Oh, oh no. Okay. 1.215. What you could also do is you could also do symmetry. Twice, one half from 0 to pi over 2 of that 1 squared minus 1 minus cosine of theta squared d theta. And again, I'm typing these in my calculator, so keep that in mind. Okay, next example. Find the region that lies inside this graph but outside the graph of r equals 2. So r equals 2, I know how to graph that one. This graph is a petal graph. So each one of our petals, the radius of it, the highest point is going to be 4. It's a cosine, and we're even, so I have 4 petals. I start at 0. And then I take my number of petals and I divide it by... 2 pi divided by that. Ooh, that's a really big pedal. That's a really small pedal. Wow, I'm really having a hard time drawing these tonight. So, that is what we're looking at. So notice how these, if I drew it correctly, would be all equal and all symmetric. So I'm going to take 4 times the area of just one of them. 
and my outside function is 4 cosine 2 theta minus 2 squared d theta. Now let's talk about those intersection points. How you find those is set your equations equal. So I take and I get when the cosine equals one half that e that is at pi over three. So then two theta equals pi over three. I solve to get pi over six. So that's this point right here. Since the graphs are symmetric, I have negative pi over six down there. And it's the same reason I need to have like a continuous one piece of the graph. So negative pi over six to pi over six. Finding this answer, I get 15.306. Now, I know this is a long video. Um, I'm going to do the next piece. You don't have to worry about this for the AP. Um, actually, no. I'm just going to leave it here. We'll just leave it like this. Because I talked about the other piece in class and I didn't even get to the example. So that is some polar calculus for us.